What up, dog? First of the party nation. What's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal, Breeze? What's good, baby? What we doing today, man? What we talking Rex. about? Man, you know what we talking about. All the most important things. Before we got to get something out the way, this is first of the party. 18 years of older sports broadcast. Listen, explicit content. We're going to keep it how we keep it. So if you ain't 18 years old, you got to go. But for everybody that's here, y'all know where we came from, man. It's the NBA playoff time, bro. Yes, Play sir. Playing, baby. Playing time, man. Let's get it. Yeah. Let's talk yes, about sir. it. Last night, we had the Warriors that showed championship heart against the dangerous Los Angeles Lakers, man. Yes, sir. How you feel about it? Kick it off. Uh, man, I, I made a post, you know, uh, earlier in the day, and I said we still in Steph Curry era. I, I, I still wholeheartedly believe that. I mean, we got a couple of uh, speed bumps with injuries and things right. of that nature, but I feel like right. we still in that era. What he doing, man, he ain't changed the game, man. From, you know, you go to the gym right now, you know, you run into the three-point line on the fast break. That's from Curry. Man, he been just playing lights out, man. I think he the first player to lead the league in scoring after, what, year 12? Mm-hmm. Lights out, man. He don't even need the ball in his hands. He playing off screens. You know what I'm saying? They just got the Warriors got championship uh, medal, bro. You know, there's just a lot of championship medal with that team, bro. Uh, Draymond, you gotta forget, man. Them soldiers still over there. Kevon Looney, a soldier, won the championship with them boys. You know what I'm saying? They brought back Jordan Bell. You know, Draymond, Draymond Green. Everybody, you know, forgetting about Draymond, man. Like he, he can't get a triple double. You know what I'm saying? Like he can't go out there and get you uh, and, and lock down. You know what I'm saying? It was a hell of a matchup last night. It was a right. hell of a matchup. And it don't be surprised if that was a preview for the Western Conference Finals. Not just a matchup in a play-in. Like the right. Warriors playing as good as anybody last night. They took the champions to the to the limit, bro. On to the road. The limit. To the you limit. Know what I'm saying? Steph Curry with 39 last night. And and look, another thing that's been going uh that's not been talked about, Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins played defense last night. Held LeBron to two of nine shooting last night. Held him to two of nine shooting. Those start, those players are starting to get that championship mentality like we can really win. Warriors yeah. going to do some damage. I guarantee you this. If they win this game tomorrow, they're going to win the first round series, whether it's against Utah or it's against Utah. So Ooh. it's going to be Utah. First of the party Utah. predictions, we early with it. Yes, sir. I want to talk about Draymond. A lot of people want to talk about Draymond scoring. And we in this era where if you're not scoring, you're considered a bum. Draymond showed last night how you can dictate a game by keeping everybody involved but dominating on the defensive end. Anthony Davis is considered one of the top five talents in the NBA right now. No lie, no lie. first half, Draymond gave him problems. He was everywhere. And I, let me tell you right now, there is no better pick and roll defender in the NBA right now if you watch the tape than Draymond Green. He shut Anthony Davis pick and roll down multiple times yesterday. AD got cooking in the second half, which that's what he's supposed to do if you're a top five talent. Draymond got more heart than that boy. And it, and, and that's that's just what it is. He a champion. Got that dog. He got that dog in him, bro. I'm going to tell you this too. The Warriors outplayed the Lakers. The third quarter is how the Warriors lost that game. Way too many turnovers, yeah. and the the others, right? The others, they didn't they didn't show up as much as they did in the first half. But I'm proud mm. of Andrew Wiggins. He shut me up. I'm not an Andrew Wiggins fan at all. But the performance that he put on yesterday is nothing but respect to that guy. Shout out to my boy Jordan Poole, Michigan man. He made oh, some big shots. Uh, but yeah, the, the the Lakers, in my opinion, are in trouble. LeBron James that shot last night, pure luck. You can't convince hey, me. Hey man, That's you gotta give him. We gotta That's give him his opinion. credit, man. We gotta give oh, well, LeBron let's his about credit. It. Let's talk about it. We gotta give it. LeBron his credit when LeBron and you know I've been one of the, the the biggest critics of LeBron over his career. You know what I'm saying? Um, he, he knocked it down, man. He knocked down a shot. He made it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, when he misses, it, we we on his ass, and I'm one of the motherfuckers to be on his ass. For sure. But uh, it, last night he was, you know, he knocked down the shot when they needed. You know what I'm saying? Perfect. Well, you know, and you gotta you gotta take into a factor. We keep yeah. looking at him to be a Superman, to be uh year 10 LeBron. This is, you know, an older LeBron, you know what I'm saying? And sure. He's still being effective and being a superstar, you know, level player. But we got to get that man, you know, some of his credit, man. He knocked the shot down. He made the plays when they needed. He did a lot of acting. A lot of acting. But, hey. I don't know. I, I still, I think that he did get poked in the eye. 
Um, and that motherfucker say he's singing three just the way LeBron, right. Yeah, just a little, the, the way LeBron do certain things, man. Like, dog, I'm not even a LeBron hater, bro. I just have to call stuff how it is. Like, come on, man. You all Space Jam coming dog. up, dog. I seen three rims. I just shot at the one in the middle. Like, <laughs> Space Jam <laughs> coming up, bro. <laughs> but, I, I, but uh, yeah, man, I I think the Lakers are in trouble, man. Think that, are they going to beat Phoenix? Yes, but Phoenix is going to take them to seven games. I, in my opinion, I'm going to go ahead and call it our first first of the party. First of all, reason why is Chris Paul. Chris mm-hmm. Paul is tired of being, saying that he a choke artist. He's tired of hearing that. He really believe in his young Phoenix team. In my opinion, they got the coach of the year. I see them taking the champs to seven. And the thing that, to me, that would take the Lakers over the hump is that front line. And I, and I keep harping on it. They, the, the Warriors play small ball, and they, it took Drummond out of the game last night. I don't know if Phoenix got that same firepower to be able to do that. Um, but I think it's going to be a magnificent series, man. I think it's going to be a lot closer than what people think. We got to watch out trouble. and see who uh, – I mean, the Lakers, man, you got to remember, man, they got championship experience, bro. A lot of them players got championship experience. Um, LeBron in the playoffs is a different motherfucker, man. We know that. Sure. That motherfucker in the playoffs is a different motherfucker. And, um, and it's, it's a special season because the fans are being let back in. You know, things are starting to be a look uh, – seem back to normal. So Staples um, was rocking last night. Let's talk about it. Staples yes. was rocking last night. They yeah. had the big boys. Yes, like Trey, sir. Michael B. Jordan. Yes, uh, sir. For people that don't know, too, we all first the party. We try to deal with everything sports. LeBron James did just drop his uh, tequila. That's why uh, Drake and uh, uh, Michael B. Jordan was already in attendance. He got some new tequila out called uh, Lobos. Like I said, the moves that LeBron James do as a black man off the court, hey, I love him. Respect him to the highest level. On the court, you know how it is, you know. That ain't my guy, you know. <laughs> hey, let's man. talk about the other play-in game, dog. We had Memphis and the Spurs, right? The Young yes, Dogs. Sir. Yes, sir. John Morant. Young Dogs. Ah, oh, man. Uh, I was very impressed with them young boys yesterday. And it was good to see uh, – for a lot of people, that's not hip to Memphis. Them boys is lit. Lit. Jaron Jackson been out all year. Uh, Valentunas, uh, a.k.a. Travis Kelsey – uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, no. he, uh, he, yeah. he he's a low post threat, bro. Like you know, they've got Old legit school. players. Dylan Brooks, talk to me, hot, bro. Hey, but Come you know, on, out of out of Oregon, man, three and D type player, but he can go get his own. He ain't just a traditional just sit in the corner, hey, shoot the three ball. He got better. He got better when he came into the league. That's exactly who he was. Hard nosed defender. Yeah. I'm gonna knock down my open shot. If you watched him last night. 24 points. I'm putting it on the floor against DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. And I'm going to hold DeMar DeRozan to 5 of 21. He fully dominated his matchup with DeMar DeRozan. And if, and if I'm DeRozan, I would be ashamed of the performance that he put out because it was fully affected by Dylan Brooks. His, he missed his first, what, eight shots? He went 0 for 8. You Dylan Brooks had everything that, uh, to do with that. You got to remember the job Dylan Brooks did against Steph Curry the other day, uh, Sunday. You know, he was, in his, he was in his shit. You know, he was actually holding Steph Curry down. Uh, mm-hmm. He picked up a lot of fouls, and then he fouled out. That's when Steph erupted. So uh, he's a good defender, man. But uh, DeMar DeRozan, his ass on his way out, man. He a free agent at the end of this season. Uh, you can look for him to come back out east. Uh, you, you might see him go out east. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him latch on somewhere like New York. You know oh, what I'm saying, the Knicks. We, we, yeah. good. we, we yeah. appreciate it. DeMar DeRozan, is, is he a ball stopper, and he a mid-range uh, uh, killer. We need somebody that can stretch the floor and let Ju do his thing. You feel me? We don't need no ball star. We need somebody that can pop that ball around. So thank you, but no thank you. We okay. Speak, we hey, who y'all got in the first round of the Knicks? Atlanta. Oh, we got Ooh. Atlanta. Yeah, we're going to take care of that. Hey, Migos got a new, hey, Migos just dropped a new joint out, too. Yeah, they, they got a uh, they album coming out. What's that, June 11th? Straight man. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Trey. Boy's hey, coming. Ice Trey. You better watch out. You feel me? <laughs> it's a lot hey, of momentum I, I, I going out of ATL. I also, since we since we on the pop culture real quick, I also want to shout out the announcers from the uh, from the uh, Memphis Grizzly and the Spurs game. How they dropped the little J Cole line in there. He was like, "John Moran is now on his Grizzly." I'm like, "Okay, boy, been listening." Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> boy sir. Been listening, dog. I am fully, uh, bro. I'm I'm low key starting to fall for the Memphis Grizzlies, bro. It's the excitement, man. It's the young, it's what I wanted Hornets to be. That's what it really is. I always got a thing for the young teams. I love to see the up and coming young scrappy team. I believe in John Morant. I believe in Memphis Grizzlies. I love the grindhouse. I've always been a fan of Memphis, but this Memphis team, this young Memphis team, man, 
I like them. I like them a lot, man. Yeah, they've been hot, man. They was uh, right there last year. They was right outside the bubble last year. So they had a shot last year to get in. They fell in the play-in last year. Um, it just come down to whether it's going to be them or the Warriors right now. Who you know, And they both playing some good basketball. Mm-hmm. But you getting you getting right in front of arguably the MVP, and um, now I was right on both of the Western Conference players games. I was wrong on both of the Eastern Conference playing games. Uh, we had uh, Boston versus uh, the Wizards, mm-hmm. and I had the Wizards getting them because Jalen Brown was hurt. Okay, yeah. I didn't think Kimball was gonna come out there and explode for twenty some points, and then you got JT going doing it. I know JT gonna do his thing, but. Kimball was the X factor in that particular game, in my opinion. And um, Russ played terrible. JT, so. uh, Jason Tatum, he been hot, scoring the basketball real good at a good clip, very efficient. You got to remember, Boston got gang members, bro. They, they got Kimball that can go crazy. They got Marcus Smart, you know what I'm saying? He can score. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. got Evan Fournier that they traded for. He can yeah. score, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you got parts, you know what I'm saying? They lose Jalen Brown, that's a – Big piece, especially defensively and shit huge, like that. Huge. But uh, Robert Williams, the young fella who rebounded the fan, played above the rim, catch lives. You got playoff experience with Tristan Thompson rebounding, playing defense, finishing around the basket. Kimba, man, like I said, they got guys that could go off at 30 any good even night. You know what I'm saying? Kimba, 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 just, Kimba just too inconsistent. When, when when we first heard that Kimba was going to Boston, we envisioned a high powered offense. We got Tatum, we got Brown. Then they then they made a move for Evan Fournier. I'm like, oh, they trying to they they trying to firepower their way through this thing, and I and I respect it. Kimba just wasn't, but he showed up. He brought the New York out of him. You feel me? Mm-hmm. He went back to Connecticut. You know what I'm saying? He had that 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 different type of Kimba. And, and I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed it. He's getting to the cup. I'm taking you, and his jump shot was on. When Kimba jump shot is on, he won the deadliest point guards in the league. Well, he it's moving, just his jumping so too moving, inconsistent. When he moving laterally, he really good. Um, this is a good series, bro. This is a, a exciting series. A lot of storylines in this series. Mm-hmm. You got to remember uh, – Kyrie was the former point guard of the Boston Celtics, went out there and said, you know, hey, I'm resigning, you know, next year. If y'all have me, I'm, I'm resigning here next year. Turns out that was a fucking lie. He took his sage and got the fuck on. Uh, so Kyrie, you know, so and then the point guard that replaced him was Kemba Walker. You know what I'm saying? So now Kemba is this, he's loved in Brooklyn or whatever. And, you know, Kimba from New York, you know what I'm saying? He's like, hey, man, I'm the point guard from New York. Charlie, you know, New- so it's a lot of shit going on there. A lot of young exactly. talent. Uh, they match up well because Brooklyn isn't that big. So Tristan Thompson and Robert Williams could be, a, you know, could get away with it there. You know, to Jason Tatum, you know what I'm saying? Marcus Smart, you know what I'm saying? Evan Fournier, they got some guys that could match some firepower. I'm not going to say they go match Harden and Kyrie and Durant. But they can definitely put out some points. Maybe we can see what Stevens do, Brad Stevens do defensively. See what he do if he pull out them zones. So you don't think it's going to be a sweep? Um, I get or, a, or, or, one, or would it be like a tough sweep? Like every game is kind of tight, but Brooklyn end up pulling through. Do you think it would be more like that? I think it could be a five games. I give them one so game. So a gentleman sweep. Yeah, okay. gentlemen, sweep, okay. you know, about five okay. with that one. Let's touch on how Indiana did the young boys out there in Charlotte, man. They ran them, they ran them off the court, man. They did them real, real bad, man. They, they ended up winning by 18, but I think at one point the league had balloon, literally mm-hmm. like 23, 24. They was beating the shit out of uh, uh, the Hornets. And I hope Michael Jordan was watching it because them young boys need a veteran presence. It was a lot of immaturity. They didn't come out like it was the playoffs. They didn't have anybody to kind of be like, hey, you, you do understand it's the playoffs. For mm-hmm. example, the Spurs is actually a young team. A lot of people don't really realize that, but they had Rudy Gay. Rudy Gay was showing through his, his, Patty his Mills, game. Right, Patty Mills, DeMar DeRozan. They, they were showing through that game that it's mm-hmm. a playoff. We need to play. Charlotte didn't have it. They still was kind of in that regular season. They thought it was going to be sweet. No, it ain't like that. In the end, they came missed, out there. They miss Gordon Hayward a lot. They miss Gordon Hayward. And – um. Man, they do. Everybody they do need bad. to stop getting away with this, uh, trying to play like the Warriors and play small ball and everybody go out there and shoot threes. P.J. Washington is not a center. Mikhail Bridges, uh, 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 Miles Bridges is not a center. Um, some nights you can get away with that shit, but you, so we need to get back to a time where you get back to traditional big man, some presence in the paint, and that's what they miss. They miss somebody that can guard Sabonis on a perimeter and down low, and they miss somebody that can make him work on offense, you know what I'm saying, on a consistent basis. 
man, uh, they got a bright future. Uh, I think Lonzo will be there next year. I can see, like I told you, I think all three of them go eventually be over there. I can see that. Um, okay. um, maybe Leangelo was on like a G League level, you know, because he like to steal glasses and shit, you know. So I think I think the second boy, the second oldest. The thing about him is like he got a a, a pro ready jumper, and that's it. I don't see yeah. no other part of his game, in my opinion, that's pro ready. Yeah, that motherfucker he gonna be on VH1, bro. <laughs> Some bitch, reality star yeah. soon, some 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 scallywag, some skis are gonna suck him in. <laughs> no, who you got tonight though, man? Indiana or Washington? Man, I got Washington, man. I hope wrestling pull it out. I made a bet on that shit too. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm gonna go with Washington too, man. Let me tell you why. I had picked Washington to win the other night, and they ended up letting me down. I just don't see Bradley Beal and Brody letting me down again. They got to know the importance. Plus, Russ, you got to come out and beat Russ. He didn't have no intensity last game. He had the one put back dunk. He gave you the classic West Bush screen. After that, his ass was quiet. So I'm expecting Russ to show up and, you know what I'm saying, be a part. The problem is the Wizards can't stop no damn body. They can't stop nobody, bro. Hey, their defensive efficiency is not good. That's why they're in the predicament that they're in now. So who in a better position I, to beat Philly? Now I'm not saying they go beat Philly, but who's in right. a better position to be competitive with Philly? Warriors, I mean uh, Wizards or Pacers. You now you got to remember Lavert is out with the COVID. They got Brogdon and they got Sabonis, but but, but Turner Turner coming back though. My uh, the center, the young boy, Miles Turner, right? Turner. His name? Is he coming back? I heard he was supposed to be coming back in enough time for the first series. So mm-hmm. after this game, the whoever if they win, then he should be coming back. If if Miles Turner came back, I'm taking Indiana because that's still one he ain't gonna stop NB, but that's still one more body to throw at him. Mm-hmm. If not, then you gotta go with Washington because they at least got two stars that can fill it up and you never know what can happen. It you come know? down for me, man. Um but uh Philly Washington. Can run over either one. Washington. I think and I think um they got some bodies over there they can throw at NB. They got enough fouls. They got Lopez. They got Alex Lynn. They got uh, and Daniel Gafford. Three legit seven-footers that they could throw at and be. Not saying they're going to stop him, but they got enough fouls. They got enough fouls. And then you got to remember this in a half court. We got to make Ben Simmons make some shots. Got to. Dude, Russell Westbrook. To sag off. What, there is a bit of a rivalry there in Philly with Embiid and Westbrook. So there is life there. You got the score, you got the leading score in Bradley Beal. You know what I'm saying? Westbrook out there. You got some young pieces. You got a uh Hatchamore out there that's trying to make some plays. You know what I'm saying? I like Hatchamore too. I like but him. they got uh they got a sniper in Bertans. Don't they, forget about Ish Smith. He changed the tempo as yes, soon as he yes, did the game. Yes. And I love I've been loving Ish Smith since he was at Wake Forest, man. Like mm-hmm. I love when he get on the court, everybody know we pushing. The bigs is running. Uh, yeah, you're right. I, I'm agree. I'm agree with you 100 percent on that. Washington probably will be a better matchup, but I man, look, Philly gonna steamroll either one of them. Yeah, you just gotta keep that. it. You know, gotta keep it a book. I think they're gonna steamroll them. Uh, we gotta touch on the Hall of Fame though, man. The Hall of Fame just passed. We had some. In my opinion, this is my era, so I'm gonna be biased. We had a legendary class that just came in. Best okay. class I've probably seen, man. Period. Yeah, KG. Honest. Uh, excuse me, Kobe Bryant always got to come first. Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, Rudy T, Tamika Catches, Eddie Sutton, Kim Moley, uh, Barbara mm-hmm. Stevens, and Patrick. Uh, who was that? Patrick Bowman. I mean, that's a that's a hell of a class, man. We got I mean, the shout coaches. Out to Tamika Catches, bro. Uh, Indiana Fever. Um, legend. Legend, legend, bro. Uh, legend, bro. Three and D offense, just the heart and soul of that team, man. And, uh, I grew up watching her, man. Uh, Love her game, toughness, uh, personified toughness. Most definitely, bro. Ben Wallace, bro. Ben Wallace, bro. Virginia Union. If you feel like you can't make it, god damn it, that motherfucker made it from Virginia Union, bro. Uh, First ever undrafted. Six nine, six eight. Fear of fro. Undrafted player, bro. To make Fear it to of fro, the... man. Hey, Come on, man. My boy, Come Ben, on, man. dog. Hey, Come man. On, man. We hey, we grew up here, man. With that gong, when you heard that gong, man. You know what time it is. I mean, he was the first big to guard one through five. People you know don't even know, I know they say Ben Wallace. Dennis Rodman, but dog. Ben Wallace was a motherfucking beast, bro. 
Hey, people don't even know, man. Ben Wallace, he helped change. He helped re, re, bring, bring back. I'm not going to say change. Detroit always been that type of team, always been that type of city. But Ben Wallace helped. He was one of the main forces, if not the exact main force, to bring back that Detroit scrappiness. He brought back the hard, like people was in the arena wearing hard hats to the game. Because we was going to like, do do Detroit's going to work. Like that was us, you know? He fit, he fit, he was the blue collar. He fit, he fit us, bro. He fit the city. He, he had Most all that shit, man. He and so. when we lost him, man, we lost it all, bro. Let me like, ask you a question. Who was I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, a lot of people thought when we traded Chauncey that that's when it, it went to hell, but really. We we lost Ben. That was the heart and soul of the team, man. Well, ben took that money and went to Chicago, man. We was like, oh yeah. shit, here we See, go. See, Joe Joe should have ponied up, man. See, Joe was on yeah. some bullshit. Little fat, <laughs> little fat fucker. Hey, chill, man. That's one we're talking him, about man. one of the greats, man. We're yeah. talking about one of the greats, man. We're talking about a finals MVP right there, man. That motherfucker drafted good. Darko, man. Fuck, man. Fuck, All right, fuck. Hey, man. We gotta let that go, man. We gotta let it go, dog. You gotta who, ring. Who's you your gotta favorite? Ring. Who was your favorite speech, man? From the uh, from the Hall of Fame. Um, of course, I'm gonna have to go with Jizzle, man. KG, man. He always be so genuine, man. man he always KG so did. genuine. He always, it's always real. You know it's real when it's from Jizzle. Uh, I love hearing him talk about Duncan because that was a hell of a rival. I love to shout out to She, uh, yeah. Kobe. Kobe. I'm gonna I'm I'm tell you this too, man. KG was my favorite one too. I wish KG would have mentioned Chris Webber. Only reason why, because if you listen to a lot of KG other interviews, he always mentioned how hard it was to deal with Chris Webber because it just Chris Webber just had the mindset, I'm dunking everything. Ain't no layup in me. I'm shitting. I'm dunking. You know coast what I'm saying? Coast. And coast I, and I enjoyed Tamika Ketchings. Uh, I, I enjoyed hers, too. I enjoyed her speech, man. It, she, it allowed you to kind of know who she is. Um, Tim yeah. Duncan's speech was cool. Because I, I didn't know, like he how you know how he came from the eye. It was certain things that he knew that uh, about Tim Duncan that swimmer. I didn't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it was certain things that I didn't know. Of course, Vanessa, man, she did an outstanding job. I know a lot of people was moved and, and, and was emotional with her uh, speech. She had Michael Jordan up there with her, which was a hella dope. You know, just just this uh this Hall of Fame class is definitely my favorite so far. I know, I know, a lot of people know that I know he looked up to Jordan a lot, and that was like big bro, but. I would love to see Shaq up there, man. I would love, I would love to replace him with Shaq. You know, so it was genuine love there, man. Genuine love. They won championships together, um, and we we probably would have connected on with that. Talking about the fans, you know, we would have connected with that more. Uh, we know about we we didn't we really didn't get to see the Jordan Kobe relationship. Maybe on on court and little snippets behind the scenes, but yeah. Kobe and Shaq, that was the love. You know, I kind of wish we would have seen that on on. Uh, you know, for the Hall of Fame, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was I, no I, I agree. Chris Webber, bro. We got to talk about it. Man. Chris Webber, he, uh, he a Hall of Famer, man. We, we talking about a Detroit native, a guy that was from Detroit, a guy that went to Michigan. He held it down. Nah, one of the whisper. Come on, man. He, he a Michigan great. <laughs> uh, you know, and him and him and uh, Jalen Rose, man, they reunited on live national TV like grown man should. Yeah. He stopped it. And I just, I'm really, uh, man, I'm just excited about this whole, everything that's going on with the Fab Five right now. Jalen successful doing his thing. Uh, you know, Ray coaching. Uh, Juwan Howard got University of Michigan on point. Number one recruiting class coming in. Yes, sir. And then you got Chris Weber as a Hall of Famer, man. As a Michigan fan, you can't really ask for more, you know? Um, inspired, man. It's exciting, man. Man, it was love to see them boys out there. You know, growing up here in Michigan, um, Growing up here, man, the Fat Five was huge. You know what I'm saying? Trendsetters, long shorts, black socks, black shoes. You yeah. see all these teams in the playoffs wearing that shit now. Uh, <laughs> but we got to give uh, Chris Weber some some love, too. We got to recognize his game, bro. Uh, you see a lot of small ball being played right now. He was the first one, really, to do that shit. Like, he was the first one, 6'9", 16, pushing it besides a point guard like Magic. Right. Now you got Jokic who might win the MVP who pulling people out on the perimeter. You know what I'm saying? Doing that. Right. Right. Weber was doing that shit. Weber was dropping five assists. Weber exactly. was taking the coast to coast, dunking on people, shooting a three. Got to give him his, his, his flowers, man. But uh, it was yeah. very exciting. And, and look at the state of Michigan. Look at the sports teams here. Look at the excitement that's going around here. Uh, Rose and Weber coming together is nothing but good for Michigan, for that's the University of Michigan. 
Now for you sure. can see Weber coming around the university more. You don't see Jalen and Weber definitely. there anymore. So that's good press for the basketball team. Uh, you already the know football team ain't doing shit right now. We're gonna Very be we're gonna wait. We're gonna get that fucker in the khaki soon. <laughs> so a little more time, man. God damn, man. Fire this bitch. Man, dog. He tripped. And and make it make it worse because you look at the other coaches in Michigan. You look at the basketball coach, you look at the softball team, you look at the swimming team. They all winning championships. Your gymnastics. ass can't even you can't <laughs> yeah. gymnastics. Your ass can't even win a big ten title. No, I can go all night on it. I ain't I ain't gonna get into Jim Harbaugh, man. But, mm. but like yeah, you said though, the press for Michigan, man, it is great right now. I'm a, I'm me yeah. and you. We grew up uh Wolverine, we grew up Michigan fans. So um hey man, that's big. That's that's huge right now. It's huge right now. Football, man. Hey, our, our rookies went to mini camp. Yes, <laughs> boom, 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 waiting all day for a Sunday night. Boy, yeah. Man. So, man, uh, how you feel about the Lions' uh, schedule first? Though, let's talk about the schedule real, real quick, one more time, because I just want to see, uh, you know, how you feel about the schedule. Hey, man, it's the pretty. Schedule, tough. It is what it is, man. You got to play. It's football. You have to play. Everybody at the beginning of the season. So, uh, uh, like five to six, seven teams who we have at the top of the power rankings fall down, who we have at the bottom fall up. It's always surprise teams. Uh, it's always a tough schedule at the beginning, and then somehow it turns out, oh, that's a cupcake schedule. Um, schedule is what it is. Uh, Lions got to play. The, they got to play who they got to play. Um, I like the. Uh, I like that we got some of the colder games. Early in the season, like Green Bay, early. <laughs> that helped, I love that, that shit. Bro. You know what I'm saying? That should help, bro. Uh, sure. Chicago is October or December. Okay. Let me see that. I, I don't know off the top of my head. I think it's October. If that's if it is October, then that's great because we got Minnesota in the dome. You know what I'm saying? So, um, the Lions, uh, schedule wise, I'm not. Yeah, you know, I mean the schedule is what it is. You got to play these games. Um, I, I I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little pissed off about it. Looking at it right now, before any games is being played, it's no way in the fuck the Lions. It's no way they schedule should be that goddamn hard. And then you got people like Tampa Bay, Kansas City. They more middle of the road, but you got Tampa Bay way down there. Like, come on, man, the Lions should have had a way easier schedule than that. And I'm not looking. At, I'm not I'm not looking for no favors, man. But I'm just saying, come on, man. They well, do the Lions well, like this all the time, man. That's well, it's not bullshit, really like they're dog. doing this a certain way. Uh, I, I take it as that way. In certain opinion, divisions, certain divisions have to play certain divisions, and that's, that's how true. I lined up this year. And this is just lined up that hey, they, those divisions are are good. But um, there's a certain someone that became a, available today via trade. Put me hip to it. I hey, I'm just saying mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, Julio! So my, what the Julio? The Lions can get a snack away Julio Jones. Not look at that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm a Lion fan, and yes, I'm just optimistic. I love to, you know, have hope. But I remember Ralph St. Brown from the from the Lions rookie mini camp. He came out there and said, I'm coming to take somebody's job. Very productive that. player at USC. Uh, very productive. Uh, not just one year, but it's been multiple years. Um, Julio Jones is available, though. You got a Tyra Williams. You got Hawkinson. Now, out of all those weapons that you got, you add a guy like Julio Jones, that's crazy. Now, you look at the storylines. Calvin Johnson and Sheila Ford has been talking. This, talking. Mm-hmm. Talking, true. About rekind- talking about rekindling it. That's true. Julio has been compared to Calvin Johnson all his career because of his size and a comparison from the size and speed. Man, if you would have Calvin Johnson back around at Allen Park with Julio in there, just the press alone from that Julio on the building and, and Calvin around Island Park working out with him, you know, working with him and just talk, being a, being a mentor around there. I guarantee you they'd be talking about Jared Goff the way they was talking about Jared Goff when they was going to the Super Bowls. I'm not even going to lie, man. Julio coming into the building would change uh, the Lions organization like that. That he's that type of player. And then with the offensive line that we got, Mm. We trying to run the ball. Mm. Now we getting now we working with Jared Goff strength. We play action. You know, Julio. You see what I'm saying? And then even even if we have to just use Julio as a decoy, now we still got a Pro Bowl tight end up the seams. 
Tyrell Williams can handle his business, and we got other weapons that we're trying to get acclimated with. That's mm-hmm. something to be excited about. Yeah. Well, Julio Jones, about. he's so used to being double team. Well, it's hard to double team somebody when there's a lot of play action. It's a lot mm-hmm. of play action. It's hard to mm-hmm. double team. When you got a, a team that's got a dog ass run game, and and that's what the Lions are aiming for. That offensive right. line is equipped to be one of the best run games. That's why they went out there and got Jamal Williams. You heard what Anthony Lynn said today. He said, hey, he's an a, a, a grade type running back. We're yeah. going to pound the football. He's going to get his carries too. So sure. they're going to want to run that football and then pass off of that. Now, if you got a Julio Jones that can take the top off over any corner, any corner, you got a shot. You got a shot against anybody. But that run game, and then you got to remember, you got a pro bowler at wide receiver at tight end in Hawkinson. That's right. Okay. And you got a guy in Tyrell Woods on the other side. That's a big, tall, lanky receiver. He definitely a target. His catch radius, his catch circumference is, is, is there. You know what I'm saying? He, he can make some of those big boy catches. So you, the Lions fans, I mean, they should be excited. You know what I'm saying? And and, it, and let me tell you right now, too, if, the, if there is a true Lions fan right now and they say that they follow football or they paying attention and you are not excited about what the Lions is trying to do, how they drafted, what the moves that they're trying to make, I don't know if I can really take you serious as a football fan or as a Lions fan. A lot of people we see on Facebook, a lot of people, oh, man, a lot. Listen, man, you got to build within the trenches, man. And that's the what these guys thing to are do doing, here, man. Easiest thing to do here is to root against the Lions, man. Man, I got to talk about my Ravens, though, man. Shout out Let's to everybody it. in there. Everybody on here about the Ravens flock. I got to talk about the rookie mini cap. You hear me? Wow. I'm very excited. We're going to start off with Bateman. What I seen from Bateman, I was impressed. Um, he he bigger than what he looked like on on uh, his measurements is that he only six foot. He don't play like that, you know. Mm-hmm. He played way bigger than what he really is. I'm really I'm the most of uh, the thing that I'm improve, uh, impressed with the most is his smooth route runner. He is a smooth route runner. Uh, Bateman is the he other rookie open. that he is. He is the other rookie that we got, Tylen Wallace. You know what? Fire. That was a steal. That was a steal. But the most, the thing fly. that I, I'm impressed with, man, is he he is uh he's very physical, man. He remind me of Steve Smith, and he gonna catch the ball in traffic, contested catches, and that's what o- Lamar need. You gotta Oklahoma have somebody, State, right? Yeah, yeah, Oklahoma yeah. State, Oklahoma yeah. State, and we got his boy Justice Hill in the backfield too. So that's Ooh. a new, that's another connection. No, he ain't uh, playing. He ain't playing. Ben, he ain't playing. ben Cleveland, the lineman mm. that we got from Georgia, the guard. Um, one of the knocks against Cleveland right now is just that man. He not a, he not great in pass protect. But he great at run. So he looks to me like a Raven guard. And I believe that he might probably gonna start on that right guard side. We got depth there now, which I'm excited about. That right side, we have depth, that right tackle and that right guard. Trust me, we're gonna be able to continue to run that ball. We're gonna be able to continue to run that ball. And then my guy, man, the the, the most the rookie that I'm the most excited about, man, is uh Jason uh Owe. Adafe Owe, excuse me. Let me say his real name. Uh, the 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 first round pick that we got from Penn State. Hey man, how long did it take for you to learn that goddamn name? Hey man, I've been practicing, bro. You know, man, me. you had to practice, practice to get that shit. Yeah, you Adafe had to practice Owe. to get that shit. <laughs> man, dog, a physical pe- a physical specimen, LA. Look, he a first round pick. He only been playing football for five years. Mm. He 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 got raw, untapped talent, man. And I'm gonna he tell went you to right Penn now, State he, though. Yeah, you went to Penn State. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> he ain't got nothing to do with all that. You see his name, they come up in the allegations. Hey, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that, dog. Don't hey, do bro. that, man. I'm excited about this rookie class, this, man. Shout out to Daylon Hayes, too, man. That's our last rookie that we got. But I'm excited about our I'm excited about the football season, college and NFL. Um, the rookie mini cap got me excited, man. I'm ready to go. You know, I, said, I love man. hoop. Um, I'm ready to go. No, no, uh, we didn't have uh Penny Sewell this week at uh, uh, he had a COVID, but um, everybody got work, everybody else got work. You got um, um, the both D tackles, they said they had a great time at okay. camp this week, and they said it's gonna be scary playing uh, us two playing together. So, uh, first time since we had Nick Fairley and the Dominican Sue that had defensive tackles talk shit like that. So I like uh, that, man. I like that's, that. That's I like that attitude, man. That yeah, attitude. Sir. Bring that shit back, Detroit. Let's go. Yeah, let's sir. fucking go, man. Prove people wrong. That's what Detroit, that's what the that's what the players should be thinking. That's what the coaches should be. Bro, let's prove everybody wrong. 
You got the people was laughing at your head coach because he was talking about biting kneecaps off and all this. Okay. Hey, that don't matter, though, because when you get on the field and you prove it, bro, shock the world. Why not? Shock the world. Speaking of shocking the world, what about your boy Deontay Wilder? Come on, man. Bomb squad! Yeah. Well, hey, what's that mandatory date? September 15th? No, right? they uh they already made a date for the fight. July what 4th. Is, what's the... July 24th. Fury okay. and uh Wilder, they fight. September 15th is the date that, it, that the fight could it had to be uh before that date. That's what it was. It was yeah. September 15th. Uh, they came up with a. Uh, they said that he was gonna have to get twenty million for him to step aside, but he said no, nah, ain't no step aside. I yeah, want my he don't want to step aside. I want revenge. Yeah, he, he said, said he out for revenge, man. Hey, man, I'm excited about it, man. You know, I, I want to see if he can be a true champion. Can you come back from adversity? Everybody counting you out. A lot of people in the black community turn their back on him as soon as the man lost. Yes, you know, sir. we got to stop doing that, man. We got to stop. You got to support when somebody losing and when somebody winning. Everybody not Floyd. Everybody can't go undefeated, man. Some of the greatest champions lost. And he might be one of those greatest champions that just lost. And I hope that they check that boy gloves too, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, there we yeah. go. I'm 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 gonna take it there. I'm gonna take Pop it there. Your I, know shit, the, I know the truth, man. Yeah, truth, man. that's a floppy glove over there. He's a good Fury. boxer, man, but check that glove, man. He Make wasn't sure. dropping nobody. He hit him with flush, he hit him with uh way harder punches the first fight and went dropping water. Uh we're gonna see, man. Water, don't come out there with that motherfucking uh suit on either. <laughs> Oh, come don't on, need no man, motherfucking excuses, <laughs> motherfucker. My legs are looking hurt. stupid. Come out there in a Tyson towel, bitch. <laughs> so let me. Ask, this is what I want to talk about. Since we already talking about boxing, real quick, I want to talk about uh Canelo, and the reason why is because a lot of people feel like Canelo ducking smoke. Mm. A lot of people feel like his his people has been handpicked. I want to play devil's advocate to that. If you look at Canelo last fight, he fought the number two guy at the time. Billy Joe Saunders was the number two guy at the 168 division at the time, right? Then he fought uh, – who did, who did Canelo fight before he fought uh, Billy Joe? He uh, fought Cal somebody else that was – Callum Smith. Call okay, Callum so Smith. Callum Smith was a top ten fighter in that division. The problem – I don't think necessarily Canelo duck and smoke. I think he's trying to handle his business at 168. A lot of people that's throwing out the names, you got to understand there's different weight classes. The class that y'all name it is really 160. 160 got the smoke. That's where the Charlos is at. That's where the Boo Boos is at. That's where, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's where the smoke is at. That's where Danny Jacobs is at. 160 is where the smoke is really at for Canelo. That's but where, that's the where he names. chose, though. Like, Canelo chose to go to 68. Like, he, mm -hmm. he, he went to 68 when he was at 60. Like, those fights has been there for Canelo, and he just was like, no, nah. for sure. Nah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and he's fought I mean, guys. He fought guys. I think he fought another guy from overseas that was just horrible. You know what I'm saying? Right before Callum Smith. And people was like, what the fuck? Who is this? You know what I'm saying? Who is this guy? You know what I'm saying? Canelo do handpick his fighters. You seen when he fought Billy Joe Sanders, he kind of struggled with a moving fighter. He likes to get fighters. They pick fighters that sit in front of him. I, I, I disagree with that, but... Go ahead. Go ahead. Continue your but, point. <laughs> they like to put fighters that sit right in front of them. That don't have too much movement. Um, the most movement that f fighter that he fought was Billy Joe. And I thought Billy Joe was doing a damn good job before he got socked in the goddamn eye. But uh, <laughs> a lot of people think they're doing good before they get socked in the fucking eye, cuz. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he, he socked oh, the shit, shit out of his ass, man. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> he don't like to fight fighters with movement. Here is Landy Lara gave him uh, problems. Floyd gave him problems. Uh, he, he don't like them. Uh, Austin Trout gave him some problems because they can, they slip. Man, you so know, he, he, he I, I like that guy. That's why he's not going to fight Boo Boo. You know what I'm saying? That's why he's so reluctant to fight uh, Triple G. Because it, although Triple G does stay in front of him, you know what I'm saying? Triple G has little sudden head movements, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of gave him problems. And he can take a punch. But uh, he pick his fight. He pick his fights. But he's in a white. He's in, he's in a he's in a right weight class though. Like who's up there moving at the at the weight class like that? Besides Boo Boo, you know what I'm saying? He's got to fight a boxer that's gonna be able to take him take him out. You know what I'm saying? If you go sit in there and try to slug Most with him, it ain't gonna happen. He no, gonna beat your ass. Got, yeah, the boy got he got a different type of power, man, for sure. Yeah. 
So, I mean, we done touched on everything so far, man. We uh we apologize to everybody. We normally drop on Wednesdays. Hey, we, we dropped the day late, but, hey, we got all the content and uh, that y'all needed, that y'all wanted, that y'all been commenting on, that y'all been asking us. I got a couple people that been asking us about merch. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Let's go try to figure it out, man. We, we working right now. We trying to do as best we can as far as the merch, get some hats, get some T-shirts for y'all. Uh, shit, we want the merch just as bad as y'all do. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, uh, I'm we'll talk to you probably talk to you about it a little bit, man. Uh, me and Big Fact, me and Jelly was talking about getting some merch and shit, but um, we really do need to get the merch. I seen it, I seen you was talking about seen, it. Yeah, you seen it. We need to bounce too, some like, ideas, we need to bounce some ideas man. off each other. Hey, and listen, get some shit done. dog, everybody that's on our Facebook page, man, we got two Facebook pages, but the one that everybody is on is the first of the party with the explanation point. Yo, y'all going crazy. Y'all is going, bro. My notifications has been going nuts. I appreciate Thank y'all, man. Lex, man, we Thank appreciate y'all, man. y'all, man. We yeah. appreciate all the support from everybody, man. I ain't going to try to name hey, y'all. We trying to do this Thank together, you. man. We trying to get us a, a sports platform that, you know, y'all can be heard too. You know what I'm saying? The exactly. ESPN shit, man, they kind of water it down and, and, and force feed a lot of bullshit. And they don't really let y'all be heard. Let us be heard, the fans. So, uh. We got that page is going crazy. Y'all can feel free to comment, uh, yeah. post shit on that motherfucker. Let's engage with each other and, Say and whatever, talk sports. Man. You know what I'm saying? We talk got a lot sports, of sports man. coming. Uh, I got some so, shit. Uh, I, I'm I'm working on too. I might do a little some some pro wrestling shit on there too, but man, give it to whatever. y'all from a from an urban perspective. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and and, 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 and and our community that shit is shunned upon. Like we used to watch wrestling. You know what I'm saying? But motherfuckers watch Avatar, you know what I'm saying? But it's just got to be, you guys got to show it, you know, from Whatever a different you're perspective. In, man. Yeah, so. Whatever uh, you're interested in, for sure, man. As long as it got something to do shit. with sports. But like I said, man, y'all been showing crazy love on our Facebook page. The only thing that I ask is that y'all take that same love, man, and you just spread it out, man. We need love on Twitter. We really need love on our YouTube page, man. If y'all watching this, please share, comment, like, subscribe, say something. Whatever you need, we need interactions, man. That's what we looking for. We want to interact. Uh, of course, we always think we're right, but if you think we're wrong, tell us that you think we're wrong. But you better you got to come with some information. You got to come with the big facts, baby. We come with facts, facts. Man, you know. Hey, but uh, that's all I got. Uh, Kwame Brown, I hope you get a chance to smack the shit out of Stephen A. Hey, <laughs> Kwame, hey, Kwame, out here, hey, wild. He said hey. she chose, man. He said she chose, nigga. <laughs> hey, Matt Barnes, yeah. you better watch. Her. Hey, look, they might, hey. He's smart, bro. Put him on Triller. Put him on the Jake Paul undercard, bro. <laughs> Kwame Brown trying to get on the Jake Paul hey, for the car. I told Stephen, hey, meet me out in Seattle, bro. Meet me out in Seattle where we don't need to sign no paperwork. We can just get it in. Stephen hey, A. Had, don't want them problems, bro. Man, he had knocked his hair off, bro. The rest <laughs> of it, bro. Stephen A. Be a tagline, man. What people got to do, man? Hey, man, y'all got to wash y'all motherfucking feet, yo. Wash your motherfucking feet, man. <laughs> <laughs>